right. Hello, Dr. J. Thank you so much for your time and doing this little interview. Um, I would love for you to just give just a little introduction about who you are in relationship to CellCore and how you find yourself in this amazing place with this company. Yeah, it's great to be here, Karen. Um, I am co-founder of CellCore Biosciences with Dr. Todd Watts. So we are the co-founders uh, of the company. And I would say it happened in um, a way that I wasn't intending it uh, to, if, if that makes any sense. So I met Dr. Todd Watts and I was speaking on stage on uh, Lyme disease actually and hormones years ago. And this one guy just started asking me questions at the end. And I'm like, wow, this, this guy is either really smart or he's a jerk, you know? <laughs> and uh, after, after I got done uh, speaking, he came up and just, you know, started asking more biochemistry questions. And I realized, oh God, this, is, this guy's big heart, you know, just really nice and just looking for answers. And so we became friends. And then uh, one day, uh, er, that day, then he was later in the evening, he was showing me pictures of things that people got out of them. And I'm like, I've never seen those before, you know, different mm -hmm. creatures and critters and things. And, uh, and he's like, oh, it's mimosa pudica seed. It's this, you know, para one product. And I'm like, I, I totally want to try this out. And uh, next thing you know, 17 days later, I'm pulling critters out of me. Never had that ever happen, taking all kinds of, you know, anti-parasitics and herbs and all kinds of things. Never saw that. And it hit me, wow, if I have this, a relatively healthy guy, who else does? And just across the board, the clients I was working with, I implemented, you know, call, call Dr. Todd's office, you know, order this stuff from him because uh, he was hand encapsulating at the time, you know, this is how long ago. And then we just became better friends. And then my brother said, uh, why don't you partner with Todd and come out with some better formulas. And next thing you know, here, here we are with uh, CellCore Biosciences. Wow. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> That's a great story. Um, you guys have great chemistry together and, and bring, you know, such both bring such different things to the table when you speak. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's clearly a great, it's a great combo. <laughs> Um, so CellCore is really based, you know, they're, they're kind of functional or foundational premise behind most of the CellCore products is the carbon-based technology. And just for those people just being introduced to CellCore, um, it's piqued their interest. Um, they don't quite understand what carbon-based technology is. Can you just briefly explain it? Maybe just give a little bit of its history. I know it's got roots in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, and why CellCore decided to make that the, the focus of their binders for detoxification. Yeah, so, I mean, as we came out with, uh, you know, CellCore Biosciences, I actually try to talk Dr. Todd Watts out of doing a supplement company. I'm like, you don't want to deal with the regulations. Like, mm -hmm. and then, you know, just so happened my brother later on is like, you should partner. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And Todd's like, yeah, that makes sense. Well, what I thought is we were just going to come out with more of anti-parasitic type formulas, clean the gut out uh, and really focus on, you know, what I would consider more that parasite realm. What I didn't realize is that he had scientist friends that created uh, natural products that nobody else had. And so right now we're working with about uh, eight different scientists, two different laboratories, uh, lots of different technology. And essentially what we can do is take these natural compounds, fulvics and humic acids that are basically, you know, just natural compounds. And we can extract certain things and we can make some modifications, you know, natural modifications of them to basically make them more potent or powerful. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, CellCore are, are big thing actually, like you said, is the carbon technology. It makes it unique. And, and why would we need that really? Because um, the carbon technology is the most effective detoxification, you know, supporting agents out there. Uh, it, it is covalently binding on to chemicals, which is the strongest, you know, um, bond in chemistry to actually grab onto a chemical. And the difference is that the carbon technology is energized. Uh, so in order for a molecule to get into the body, uh, there's multiple steps. First of all, it has to make it through the stomach acid. And so if I take a capsule of an herb that I want to support my adrenals, or I want to support, you know, name the organ, uh, whatnot, 
a lot of times that stomach acid just actually tears apart the herbs. Yeah. And so the carbon technology, we actually are utilizing any product that's in the capsule beyond the carbon technology. The carbon technology is actually helping to buffer those herbs and uh, elements through the stomach acid. That way they don't get torn apart. So if you look at a standard capsule, 10 to 15% of it's left after it goes to the, the stomach acid, which means majority gets torn apart, which is yeah. why you have to take so much. The carbon technology actually helps to buffer and allow it to get into the small intestine, um, you know, not damaged, if you will. Then the carbon technology is also, um, in order for it to get into the body, it's got to be small enough mm -hmm. and it has to have energy. So where, where there's um, research done where they take a Petri dish and it's like, oh, here's a little ball of mercury and here's some, uh, you know, chlorella or something like that. Oh, look at it bound to it. That's, that's not the human nature. So human, it, it has to make it through stomach acid. It has to get as across the gut barrier, which most people's guts are just, you know, destroyed and, and problematic as I, I know, you know, and then that product has to get into the body has to be small enough to get into the cell and then bind on to what it needs to bind on to, and then get back out. And what's required with that is energy. And so if you look at the old school binders, like the charcoals or the clay, there's no energy there. They're, they're already what we consider in the science world spent energy. So easy, easy example would be look at a campfire, throw a log in, you're burning, you're, you're you know, using that energy potential of the log, the fire, and what you're left with is ash, very alkaline, the ash, you can come back to that campsite a year later, and there'd be nothing growing usually in that ash, because just doesn't you know, it doesn't foster uh, life. Well, that ash we encapsulate and then we take it and we call it activated charcoal. Well, really what it is, is it's spent carbons. It's spent charcoal and it's long chain carbons. So our carbon technology is small, medium and long chain carbons. The long chain stay in the gut, the small and the medium are what get into the body. But the key is that it's unspent energy, meaning that there is it's highly charged, energized. So it can not only size wise get in the body, but it has energy to get in the body and then enough energy to actually get back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great information. Can, can you explain, I, you know, I get a lot of emails. Why is Cellcor's humic and fulvic acid so different? There's so much of it on the market. Can you talk about Cellcor's, you know, their, your extraction process, the purity, uh, the sourcing, all that, because we know cell cores is superior. Um, but can you just touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So for sourcing for carbon technology, all our carbon technology comes from the USA. Um, we don't want to deal with anything foreign, especially, um, you know, Asia, China, um, some of the contamination and things that we've tested just is not not something we want to uh, go with. So everything, all the carbon technology is from the USA. We actually have exclusivity on different areas where we get them from. There's actually multiple areas in the USA that we source them from depending on what the goal is because basically the carbon technology can be modified or depending on where we get it, it can, it can um, be adapted for what we need. So where we look at the carbon technology in an iodine product, well, that that carbon technology is not only helping to buffer the iodine and iodide through the stomach acid, but the car that carbon technology is actually uh, specifically to bind on to the um, unhealthy halogens, the chlorine, the fluorine, the bromines, because a lot of times when people react to iodine, it's just they have too many of the other halogens that are occupying the space. And if we can actually bind on to the chlorine that's in an iodine receptor type deal, then when you're taking iodine, you're not going to react. So it really depends on what the product's for, but um, yeah, everything is sourced uh, in the USA. And then as far as testing, we, um, any uh, ingredients that we get from, um, you know, our suppliers, we have a C of A, which is basically a certificate of analysis, but then we also do uh, testing before um, on that raw ingredient. We also do it um, two other times after. Uh, so before it's encaps or after it's blended and then uh, after it's encapsulated. So we're doing uh, at least three tests on every product before we even 
like ship it out to a practitioner uh, like yourself. And then we also have the certificate analysis ahead of time. So lots of testing just to make sure everything is what it, <laughs> what it's supposed to be so that we can, uh, you know, really guarantee that you're going to get results from the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the best, I mean, just the best on the market as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, you touched on this a little bit already, but I just want to kind of reiterate it um, to my audience. So th one of the reasons that, you know, the carbon-based technology is so superior to other binders um, is because um, not only is it just the best for detoxification, but it turns around and offers, you know, regeneration to the cells and the tissues simultaneously. Can you just explain just a little bit? I know you did touch on it, but just go into that just a little bit more of how it does that and yeah, why that's so important in, in with detoxification. Yes, absolutely. Um, so with the carbon technology, as you look at the body, the body is mostly made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, a, and a little bit, little bit of nitrogen of that. But basically, if you look at the body, 96% of us is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and just a little bit of nitrogen. Well, when you take, for instance, a pharmaceutical medication, um, that pharmaceutical medication is often attached to what they would consider a salt. Uh, so whatever that compound, they'll attach it to a salt. And it's like, your body is 96%. It's not salt at all. Like we're less than 4% minerals. You know, we're less than 4%. Uh, if you will, uh, salts, which are really considered minerals. So when you look at what is the body actually made out of, it makes more sense that we want to take things that the backbone of the body is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And that's really what the carbon technology is. And so as we're looking at the carbon technology, it's uh, different carbons, it's extracts of humic, it's extracts of fulvic, it is um, polysaccharides, polyelectrolytes. And basically like these polysaccharides, if you will, will actually help to um, be that backbone to support regeneration. So if I was to take like more of an older school chelator and it's just grabbing onto a chemical and ripping it, ripping it out, um, it's, there's going to be some inflammation. There's going to be some, you know, scarring, if you will, from where that chemical was, that disruption that happened. Well, the bioactive carbon technology is not only is it the, the strongest binder out there um, where it's going to be what we'd be considered multiple binding spots and covalently. So once it grabs, it's not letting go, but the polysaccharide in aspects of the carbon technology is going to help to repair that inflamed or scar type tissue so that it um, is less, what's the easiest way to say this? It's, uh, I was going to say less brutal. I can't think of a different word. Basically mm -hmm. the body can handle it so much more. So when we look at like the older school, detoxification agents, we would take them for a few days and then we'd take a break because we'd have to let the body recover. Yeah. Well, with the carbon technology, we don't need the break because there's already that, um, if you will, kind of healing reparative mechanism built in, which means we can uh, move forward faster with less symptoms. Exactly. Yeah. So it really holds this carbon technology really grabs on, holds on, doesn't let go, unlike um, other, you know, under other binders. And then, and then turns around and regenerates and nourishes the cell, which is just entirely different technology than anything I was using clinically prior to being introduced to cell core. Um, and wow, you just, you never go back. <laughs> um, and so can you explain, because I specialize in digestive health, working, you know, mostly with patients with, uh, you know, long-term chronic gut issues, how does the carbon-based technology turn around and actually support the microbiome and nourish it as well? That's a great question. So there's many, uh, there's many parts to the GI tract. As you look at the GI tract, and, and a lot of times people will say, oh my gosh, um, you know, I have leaky gut or my gut isn't doing well. The microbiome is messed up, right? I have bad bacteria. I need good stuff. Well, really a couple areas to research is this thing called pleomorphism that when a bug, what we'd consider a good bug, right? Our good bacteria comes in contact with a stressor, generally a poison. And the easiest example is eat some food and it's got pesticides on it. When you eat that food with pesticides on it, that bug then morphs changes form, 
to try to biodegrade the poison. Uh, so the, the bug pleomorphs changes form to try to biodegrade the poison. That bug then would be considered what we would generally consider, oh, it's a pathogen or it's an infection, but the bug is changing form and try to break down poisons. And I'm saying all this because when we look, look at the GI tract, so much is what's talked about is, oh, fix leaky gut, put good bacteria in. It's not necessarily that easy because if it was, then everybody's guts would be amazing because that's what we've been doing for the last couple, you know, the decade, right? Like probiotics everywhere. It's like, no, what we're missing is we're exposed to poisons that's changing the bugs and it's messing the bugs up. So we can put all the good bugs we want in, but it doesn't mean that the poisons are gone. Yeah. So we need to look at the GI tract primarily as what are the chemicals we're exposed to? Chemicals will come in the water supply. Chemicals will come in the food supply primarily. That's what's going to get into the GI tract. Um, and once those chemicals are in there, we need to bind onto them. We need to detox those, pull them out. If they stay in there, they're going to constantly be causing these bugs to change form. And you're going to constantly have bad bugs, inflammation, because the bugs are trying to break the poison down. And, and there are certain bacteria um, that are very good for actual detoxification and biodegrading poisons that we will utilize. Uh, but the primary thing is you just got to pull the chemicals out of there, you know, bind onto them with the carbon technology, and then it will absolutely change the gut. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's, it's important to mention that even if you don't have longstanding, you know, chronic gut issues, you don't have IBS or Crohn's disease or colitis or you know, you're not suffering, you're, you're still exposed constantly. I mean, these days, especially, you know, I mean, we're not all eating perfectly. We, we all go out to dinner occasionally, the food's non-organic. It's, you're, you're, you're being exposed, you know, you're walking outside and inhaling, you know, just, just walking outside, you're inhaling over 2000 chemicals. And so I, these binders are, or cell course products are, of course, essential for anyone dealing with uh, you know, longstanding health issues, but even someone that's, you know, relatively healthy, these products are important for preventative medicine. Like we have to these days be constantly addressing um, detoxification be just because of these modern day times, don't you think? Yeah, that is, that is the modern day epidemic, I believe yeah. of health right now is there's over 85,000 chemicals, depending on the country, you know, you live in, in the US alone, there's 85,000 chemicals registered to the EPA that really none of them have ever been tested. Yeah. None of them have been tested on how they interact with each other. And, yeah. you know, we're going to say, Oh, I, I don't need to detox. It's like, there's so many man-made chemicals that are unfortunately, you know, overburdening our bodies, our livers, our kidneys, the, you know, the natural, the gut, the natural detox organs, if you will, of our body. And if we just give it some support, I mean, that's what's really just going to take our health to another level. And thinking yeah. back, it's great to read some of the older, literature on what docs and natural world was like, I mean, 30 or 50 or oh, even 70 years yeah. ago, but what we're exposed to today, the things that work then we need to go to a whole nother level of pulling those chemicals out today in order to match what's been created. So um, I'm a really big fan of, you know, proper nutrition and good nutrients and good food. Uh, but there's, in my personal opinion, there's got to be a detoxification um, you know, modality or accessory into your protocols to really deal with the bombardment of chemicals. It just has to be these days. It's just an absolute necessity. We have to take responsibility for it uh, just because of, uh, of these times. Um, and so cell core is such a game changer for that. Um, you know, I wanted to touch on something that I've heard you speak about a few, quite a few times and, and, and quite recently, even yesterday in the Q&A, and um, I think it's fascinating, so I wanted to touch on it. One of the biggest concerns that I get from folks in emails is their, their fear of um, more exposure to heavy metals in, in humic and fulvic acid in general, you know? And um, what, I, what they don't understand and what you, um, the way I, I love that you and Tim explained it even yesterday, um, was the difference in the valence and that each ele element has, um, you know, it has a beneficial form and an unbeneficial form and that someone can actually be simultaneously 
um, toxic with an element and deficient, which just kind of, you know, is, is hard to wrap your brain around a little bit, but so important um, for people to understand. So if you could just elaborate on that just a little bit. Yes. So it's basically talking about the metals category. So all minerals are metals. And then there's certain metals that are heavy metals like iron, like lead, um, you know, whatnot. The, the periodic table exists um, and the body needs small amounts of pretty much all metals uh, in obviously different, you know, different ranges. Yeah. Now, what's interesting as a little side note, minerals slash metals, same thing, right? But um, generally minerals are never referred to as metals, but there are, they are metals. Like that's the category, right. all metals and minerals will actually deplete oxygen. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do with all of our products is we make sure that all of our products are actually saturated in oxygen. If there's any minerals or metals in the product, mm -hmm. because we don't want to be causing oxygen deficiency by taking minerals. So the traditional mineral that's out there, you're always going to be depleting oxygen. And when you deplete oxygen, then you're more likely to go into, you know, creating lactic acid, lactic acidosis in the body, which is then dropping pH. And then you're, you know, running into all kinds of issues. So that's a side note. But when we're looking really at metals or minerals, it's an interesting thing because there's different forms. Like if I was to look at copper, for instance, there's different uh, what we'd consider oxidation states, sometimes referred to as like valences from a chemistry uh, science standpoint. So if I'm drinking water and my house has copper pipes in it and the copper is leaching from the pipes into my water and I'm just, you know, drinking tap water and I'm drinking it or I filter it, but it's not filtering the copper out. I'm getting that copper in my body. Well, that copper is going to be at the wrong oxidative state because it's coming from a pipe. Uh, it's going to be what we'd consider an inorganic form. It's not going to be bound to a carbon molecule. Now, uh, copper that's in soil that a plant picks up, the plant will transform or transmute or it'll change its state. So it'll attach it to a carbon molecule. The copper will become attached to a carbon molecule. And then the valence or the oxidative state will change. This is why if you ever hear like, well, if you're going to consume minerals, make sure they're plant-based. Because really where we should be getting our minerals or metals, um, uh, you know, interchangeable words, mm -hmm. where we should be getting our minerals or metals is not the water supply because all the water supply is inorganic minerals or metals and they're at the wrong oxidative state or they're at the wrong valence. And so what can happen is that if I'm drinking water and it's got lots of copper in it at the wrong charge, I'm going to become toxic of that or I, I can become toxic of that I, um, copper, for instance, but at the same time, I could actually become deficient. I could still be deficient of copper, meaning I'm deficient of the right form, but I'm toxic of the wrong form. And so this is where we have to be, um, just understand that there's different states of these minerals and metals. And if a mineral or metal is in a plant derived form, it's bound to a carbon molecule, it's an organic form, and it's at the right oxidative state. If the body doesn't need it, it'll clear it out. Mm -hmm. The inorganic minerals or metals that are at a wrong oxidative state, those are higher likelihood of getting built up in the body and harder for the body to process or get rid of. And so it's very easy to become you know, toxic or too much of a certain mineral or metal or multiple but at the same time, you can actually be deficient because it's not. And so one of the things, like if you look at our CT minerals, for instance, which is extracts of, uh, you know, fulvic and just very high, high energy. Well, the actual carbon technology itself, when it goes into the body and they're, you know, tiny nano particles, they're 10 to the negative ninth, like they're tiny. They'll just go right through the gut, right into the cells, go into the body, right? High energy. Well, if it identifies, hey, there's this bad form of copper inside this cell, it, it can do two different things. You can either just bind onto it and pull it out, or it can actually what's called transmutate or trans uh, configure it, where basically it changes the oxidative state and it changes its valence or oxidative state into a beneficial one. And so this is where you can uh, just have radical health transformations when you, um, have natural products that can help to change the environment of the body. Is that answer kind of what you're asking? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, 
in, in the important the important thing is then if these products have any minerals or metals in them, right? They're covalently bound to the fulvic or the humic. And generally, if you have any like heavy metals, uh, they're going to be on a humic, which is going to be a long chain, and they're going to be covalently bound, and they're not going to release from the product, but they can act as a magnet. So if anybody's familiar with like homeopathy, for instance, and this isn't homeopathy, but I, I think the analogy helps, is like attracts like. So when you have a mineral or a metal on a product um, that's not going to release, it can act as a, a magnet to actually bind on and pull the other stuff that shouldn't be in the body out. So it's just a lot different than what you hear a lot of talking heads talk about of, oh, these heavy metals are dangerous and you're going to die. It's like, you know, when you actually look clinically, it's not heavy metals that are killing people. It is industrial environmental chemicals. It is mycotoxins from mold poisons, yes. and it is radioactive elements mm -hmm. that are absolutely destroying, ripping apart mitochondria. But, you know, it's this, it's it's an education process. So it is indeed, and and that's I just felt you know it was really important to bring up this subject specifically to educate, um, it, you know, and it, <laughs> I almost laugh when you start talking about copper in the water because the water issue and you know, the ongoing debate over the type of water. And so we won't even, we won't even go there, but I just, I almost find it humorous now when you touch on your videos. And so we'll just, you know, we'll just shout drink distilled water and leave it at, <laughs> leave it at that for now. Cause that's just a whole, I think that's a whole zoom call in and of itself. Um, but uh, you know, I myself yeah. felt really differently after, after just switching to distilled water. Um, the most important thing with water is to make sure you're drinking water with no chemicals in it. Yeah. And well, doc, I've got a 10, 15, 20 stage filter, right? It's like, great, but what's the lab that can check 85,000 different chemicals in your water to make sure you're getting all of them out? And every area is different of what's exposed. Like I'm in Puerto Rico and there's 13, I think there's 13 different landfills on the island and only two of them are lined, oh. which means that 11 out of the 13 um, you know, landfills on the island are basically leaching chemicals in. And people talk about, oh, the water's amazing in Puerto Rico because it's rainforest water and stuff. It's like, you have to understand the water might be amazing, it, but as soon as chemicals touch it, then it's not amazing anymore. Yeah. And the most important thing with water is making sure there are no poisons and chemicals. And really the natural process is to separate water from the chemicals not try to pull chemicals out of the water. It is separating, big shift here, separate water from the chemicals. And that is the distillation process. So mm -hmm. great. Well, thank you for that little summary. I, I was afraid to go there because, but I, I love the brief summary. Um, and there's certainly more education available um, on the water thing. Who knows? Maybe, maybe down the road, we can just do a whole 30 minute zoom on the, on the water thing because it is such a hot, hot topic these days of what kind of water to drink. Um, okay, so, you know, as you know, I work with, um, I specialize in digestive um, conditions and I work with, I tend to attract uh, the type of patients and type of clientele that, you know, are, have, have these chronic long-term gut issues, you know, so it's, it's, it's gut, it's immune, it's mitochondrial dysfunction, it, it's all of it, and toxic soup, you know, and these people have tried binders before. And they've tried a lot of other detoxification, you know, products and supplements and, and modalities and approaches. And so many of them have had such negative experiences in the detoxification, you know, process that they're terrified or afraid to try, you know, new products and especially new binders. You know, they're hypersensitive. You know, they've taken binders that have, you know, caused increased you know, gastrointestinal symptoms, increased their inflammation, they're in pain, they, you know, they can't eat because, and, you know, they're constipated from them, all these things. They, so they have this incredibly negative association with binders, you know, for good reason. And, and I myself have definitely had that experience. And so, you know, when starting people out um, who've had these, this type of person, I generally start them, you know, on a lower dose of biotoxin binder. Um, and I was just wondering if you could touch on why 
biotoxin binder is a good safe choice for these hypersensitive people and, and why it is so different. What is it doing that, you know, or, or even not doing that these other binders were doing <clears throat> that prevents this um, inflammation and, and negative GI symptoms? Yeah, so it really comes back to the carbon technology, uh, its ability to bind and, and restore basically the tissues. Um, yeah. And so anybody that's super sensitive, start slow and low because yeah. generally what happens with somebody that's very sensitive is the toxicity load, the bombardment of the body is super high. Well, if you just go in and want to start clearing it all up immediately with a you know, regular dose or even push it, it's like it's too much for the body. Mm -hmm. And that's where GI distress can come in because the body will create, especially in the gut, it'll create diarrhea in response of, I'm trying to vacate out this stuff that's built up. So if you're pushing detoxification and you start getting symptoms, I mean, first of all, always look at the, the product, make sure it's, you know, the proper product, the right product, you know, the best stuff out there. But the second thing is just look at the order that you're progressing in your protocol and how fast you're going. And if you are super sensitive, dose slow and low. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And from a from our company standpoint, the biotoxin binder is really, I would consider like the best gut gentle, you know, thing out there for gut inflammation. Now, after saying that, one thing that I noticed because we have some different binders like HMET, we have Viroid Chem and, um, you know, we have biotoxin binder and uh, whatnot. But a few years ago, when I was taking biotoxin binder, I was getting some loose stools. If I went over anything over a cap or two at once, uh, so if I went to like three caps twice a day, I'd start kind of getting some loose stools or my stomach would rumble a little bit. And so I just kind of kept at a low dose. And in one time I, I told Dr. Todd Watts, you know, the other co-founder, I'm like, gosh, it's just weird. Anytime I dose a little bit higher on biotoxin binder, like the gentle, you know, amazing gut binder, I feel like my stomach just kind of rumbles and I just feel like loose stools. And it, this is what just, hit me like a ton of bricks. He's like, Jay, you clearly have a chemical buildup of something that the biotoxin binder is binding onto. You need, since you're not new to this, you need to push the dose up for a little bit for a few days. Yeah, you might have some gurgling or some loose stools for those few days, but you need to bind all that stuff. And so I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do three caps three times a day. And the first few days, yeah, definitely was rumbly. And then after that, it just kind of disappeared it for a whole week and it just changed everything. It was like, I needed enough to grab onto it that then changed everything. So I say this, don't, if you're brand new, never start with high dosing. Don't do that slow and low. But there's times where we think, oh, I'm reacting to something. Like for instance, if I take an antiparasitic herb, oh, I'm allergic to, you know, wormwood or sensitive. It's like, are you sensitive to that? Or, and just as an example for an ingredient, or are the parasites in your body reacting to that ingredient? It's not strong enough, but you're kind of like poking the bear, right? You're irritating them. And then it's causing symptoms and you think you're reacting to that product, but it's actually the right thing. It's just not a high enough dose. And it's the same thing in the detox. Oh, I'm reacting to this product. Well, it actually might be binding on and that's you know, an, another practitioner, um, Dr. Moore said this best. He's like, the great thing of Cellcor bioscience products, they work. The thing you got to be careful with is they work like in dosing matters. So mm -hmm. just something to be aware of. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, the mantra I've, I've heard you guys say is, uh, what is it? The solution to the pollution is the dilution, right? Yes. <laughs> Solution to pollution is dilution. Yeah. So that, and that, that comes from like, oh, I've, I've gained three pounds since I've started, you know, on your products is like, are you drinking enough water? Cause if you're not drinking enough water to help flush stuff out, the body's just going to retain, you know what I mean? To like try to dilute the, the toxins that are starting to get moved around. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, detoxification, herxing, 
Um, you know, these are die off. These are real things um, that people with long term, you know, chronic gut issues deal with, and it's part of it. And so you try to educate, you know, folks as much as possible to and potentially anticipate a little bit of that. And it's okay. You know, you're, you're going to have to get through those first st stages, you know, and, and it's really different for everyone. It looks really different for everyone. You know, the time frame, the symptoms, um, it's just a whole spectrum. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, um, you know, it just that it's okay. I think that's the biggest thing to impress is that this is, this is a process. It's a journey, right? So, yeah, it's the experience. I mean, we, we all want the, I want to get here, but it's like, if you can't be happy and enjoy today in the moment, when you get to whatever that places like I want to get here, you're not going to be happy and enjoy that moment either because you haven't learned to love the experience. Mm -hmm. And I know arrows want to be thrown right now. People are like, you don't understand what I'm going through, Dr. J. It's like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know you as you're listening to this interview. Um, but what I can tell you is my wife nearly died twice. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there was nights where I didn't want to go to bed because I didn't know if I woke up, if my wife would be alive next to me. It was so bad when my daughter was born about nine years ago at the time of this interview. So I, I went went through darkness with my wife. But I can tell you that that what seemed to be very dark and uh, stressful time, like looking back, that was such pivotal, momental, monumental shifts in our life mm -hmm. that have changed everything that even as painful as that seemed to be. I would never go back and not go through that same thing because of what it's led us to be. And so that's kind of just falling in love with the journey, fall in love with the experience and understand like we live on earth. There's good feelings and there's bad feelings and you're going to have a mix throughout the day or year or whatever. And, and it's just knowing, hey, I'm moving in the right direction and I'm going to continue to feel and get better, the more I get tuned into my body, the more I get tuned into what's going on in my environment, and the more I can put better stuff in. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be happy and enjoy today in this moment and let go of the stuff I can't control and know that, yeah, this is the direction I'm going, but just live in the now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And thanks for for sharing that story. Um, it's important, um, you know, acceptance, I think. Um, you know, I almost died once from ulcerative colitis and they wanted to take my colon out. And uh, those were huge pivotal moments in my life, you know, at, on my health journey. And, um, and, you know, you do get through and, um, and, you know, acceptance and it does become a gift, right? That journey um, can become a gift and uh, the detoxification process can be a gift if you let it, even though it doesn't seem fun in the moment. Um, but those are important things to remember. Um, you know, on a final note, I've read just a little bit. I don't know much about uh, this process, but I do know that scientists are now using humic and fulvic acids um, for soil to, you know, draw the, the heavy metals out of the soil. Um, do you have any more information on this? And can you share? Because I think it lends to the magnitude of these compounds that they're being used in this way and then how that parallels to using them in our bodies. Yeah, the, um, you know, humics and fulvics have been used for years in agricultural um, settings. I mean, we're working with in, in that uh, aspect as well. We don't really publicly talk about it, but yeah. when, you, when you find something that is beneficial to plants, beneficial to animals, beneficial to, you know, I mean, bees, um, and you find it beneficial for humans, like, you know, you're on the right track. And that's really what humix and fulvix are used from. I mean, we have a bee project right now where, you know, it really we're changing the bee world of giving stuff that can change colonies of low rating to bump them up and, you know, massive um, reproduction, you know, increasing the colony size and the strength. And without having to fog, you know, like a toxic spray on them to get them off, like it kind of changing that industry um, quietly in the bee population. It's the same thing with with plants as well, too, in the agricultural side. Obviously, our focus is humans 
and cell core biosciences and, you know, empowering mm -hmm. practitioners with, um, you know, disruptive education, really getting down to it. But there's some other things like definitely from our lab that we're working with. And what you're going to find is these humics and fulvics have been used in the fish population to change and bind onto chemicals in fish and change that too. So it's like mm -hmm. when it covers all these different spectrums, you know, yeah, this is, yeah. this is a very great, safe, natural technology that that is really changing and transforming the planet right now it yeah. just if you haven't ever heard of it it's real early welcome <laughs> um your your life will not be the same now <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah i just wanted to touch on that it's almost like the you know these compounds are really influencing like the the, the microcosm and the macrocosm of, of the ecos the ecosystem of the microcosm and, and macrocosm you know it's like it's just it's it's just benefiting every single ecosystem, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even our, one of our scientists went over to Fukushima and gave them what's now called CT minerals um, for binding on, you know, they were testing different stuff of what binds the radiation the best. And CT minerals was off the chart. It got the best. Um, our scientists didn't get the contract because there was some money passed under the table for, you know, another company, if you will, to get the contract for binding on to radiation, you know, caused by Fukushima. But it's like, you know, something that's all around, all purpose can be used or modified to, I mean, it's it definitely makes it exciting because there's been a lot of stress in the last year or two, roughly with the way the world is. And it's very easy to kind of get in this dark moment of what's the world coming to, but just understand any darkness that there is, there's always equal, if not greater light that is uh, there to counteract. You just might not see or know of it yet, but, you know, we're, we're, our, our plan has always been to, you know, be that beaming ray of light. So, mm, mm. and that is an amazing note to end on. <laughs> so thank you so much, Dr. J. Uh, this brings so much to my community and uh, yeah, just, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, hopefully, you know, down the road, we can do this again and maybe, maybe perhaps hone in, um, you know, just a little more sometime on, um, you know, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and, and how these um, compounds are so beneficial for it. I know you and I have uh, uh, had talks too specifically about, um, you know, hydroxygen and, and what that's doing for the IBD sufferers. So maybe we can venture down that path sometime soon in the near future. Sounds great. Thanks for having me on, Karen. Okay. Thanks so much, Dr. J. Bye-bye.